So this video is a discussion on an, a, recent incident, a, re, a recent incident that took place where a Hispanic man by the name of Mario Gonzalez, uh, this took place in California, and uh, he was in the middle of being arrested, and unfortunately the individual lost his life. And of course, with the narrative nowadays that uh, they're, you know, they're trying to say that it was a police officer's fault, um, that they're just basically taking the lives of these individuals, etc. And it's important, especially as a, as a Hispanic we don't want to get dragged into what we're seeing in other communities, namely the black community, where they're trying to get us to find areas of racism. Racism will always exist, even within my own family. Uh, I've heard stories from my mother of the light skinned Puerto Ricans and, you know, being racist against their own family members who were maybe from the north or from the south where you have the rich, you know, white, you know, the blonde hair, blue eyes that live um, to the north where they're very wealthy. And of course, they were somewhat racist towards the people who are poor. Even within a own, you know, one's own lineage, there have been instances of racism. It is not to say, of course, that it is acceptable. But to sit here and say that we're going to stamp all of this out is not correct. But what we do see, especially with this instance, is where they're trying to drag in the Hispanic community to the same mess that they've been doing with the black community. And to my fellow Hispanics, I will say, do not let yourself be uh, dragged in. As the Apostle Paul said, that there will be those who would try to divide us. and We should ignore people whose sole purpose is to divide. We've seen that uh, nowadays, and that's my advice to most Hispanics, to most Latinos, to not let yourself go this route. Now, this video talk, we're going to talk a little bit about this video. This is a, this is an, a person who was found publicly intoxicated. The police officers try to make an arrest, and as a result, the events that lead up to the to the outcome lead up to an outcome where the individual loses his life. You live here in the city of Alameda? Well, I haven't gotten a house yet. Okay, can you see me one? All right, so just from the very brief altercation, one from a nursing perspective, for those who don't know, I am a nurse. I've been a nurse. It'll be 10 years come June. So just looking at it, you can see the disheveled appearance. The guy might be homeless. He asked him, do you live in the area? And he says, well, I haven't gotten a place. So more than likely, this individual could be homeless. You can see this looks like his stuff that he's basically dragging around. Doesn't exactly look like he's dressed for the weather or the occasion. This is in California. It's typically warm and you can see he's got multiple layers. It looks like he's got two different hoodies, a cutoff, as well as a vest with shorts. More than likely not, you know, that the individual doesn't have a home. He's appeared disheveled. You can see that the individual, one, is obese. Obesity typically comes with other things, for example, like diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol, just to name a few. And then, of course, from the, in, in, from the instance, uh, the individual is being uh, sought by the police because he's publicly intoxicated. So this typically with individuals who are homeless, you do see public intoxication. And of course, that brings other uh, medical problems that can play out, especially with individuals who are obese. Just keep your hands out of your pockets. Just Right, and so you can tell by his behavior that he's not exactly all with it. So maybe you might think uh, maybe some sort of uh, mental disorder. Maybe there's a history of bipolar or whatever. Right, there might you might think okay, maybe there's some sort of mental disposition. The individual's mental disposition is not that of a normal individual. But in this instance, as you can see, he's not obeying commands, putting his hands in his pocket, which you don't want to do. A police officer doesn't know. Does he have a knife or whatever sort of a weapon that he might have in his pocket? And he's been asked multiple times to keep his hands out of his pockets, but because of being publicly intoxicated, he cannot comply. Hi. Was it Mario? No. Right. Hey, do me a favor. Wait, wait, we're wait, there's something here. here, okay? There's something here. No. Hey, come over here. Come over here. We don't want you to fall down, okay? Yeah. All right. Yep, they're getting wet. We're just going to...
Right, and so you can see from the very beginning of the alter, of the of the incident that the police officers are being very cordial cordial with him. Obviously, they don't want him to fall while they're there because then they once a police officer is there, they become responsible for your well being. Just like when you are in a hospital setting, me as the nurse or individuals become responsible for you while you are within our care. Even of course in this scenario where the police are called, once police show up, they are responsible for your well being. Put your hands behind you. I got it. What? You got what? No, wait, wait, wait. It's, it's, wait. What? Hey, Mario. Uh, hey. hey, Mario, walk with me, okay? Right, so he's looking back at he's looking back at over his stuff like oh i don't want to leave my stuff behind now it's important to understand when you're dealing with someone who's publicly intoxicated as the as it says right here it says police talked to him for 11 minutes before they make the attempt to finally arrest him so it wasn't that they showed up and then just threw him to the ground they make an attempt to see if he will obey verbal commands and when they realize after a period of time that he's not able to obey verbal commands they go and of course the next step that has to be utilized is force uh in scenarios like this it's typically good when you realize when you're dealing with someone who's publicly intoxicated that the use of medications might be necessary things like for example ativan that will help to make the person a little bit more docile so it's a it's a chemical restraint that helps the individuals to calm down and it's typically utilized in a hospital setting and of course can be utilized by ems within the field to help the patient to calm down now 11 minutes is a long time and you'll see for the duration of it takes quite some time before EMS arrive. And this is, you know, in, the individual ends up having a cardiac event. Got it? You good? Oh my gosh, it's not bad. Yeah. Now, there was one thing I did want to go over, which is to pay attention to the person's hands. So you can see from a nurse, like just looking at it as an assessment perspective, you can see that there's perfusion. They were squeezing his hand. You can see that where the, where the white part of the hand is right here. And then you can see the perfusion taking place. You can see that with his hand. Now, I want you to pay attention to this later on. You'll see uh, a change in the person's hand. Now, of course, when you're in the middle of this, you're not going to notice it. But as a nurse, it's something that I noticed the first time I watched this video. You got it? You good? And you can see the person's hand is perfusing. You can see the blood is flowing very well to the individual's hand. Come on, guys. It's not that. It's not that. Here. Right. Mario. There. There. What's that? Stop yeah. it. Hey, Don't Mario. Don't do it. Give me a favor, okay? Don't do it. There. Can you please put your hand behind your back and stop resisting it? Oh, no wonder. There. I got it. Ay, ay, ay. What do you have? Sorry. No, it's not that. Okay. No, uh, yeah. it wasn't that. Hey, no. Stop, 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 stop. No. And just as you can see, these are not two small, small men that are trying to make this arrest. At the very least, you get a good sign of the size of this man. Of course, you can see the size of, of Mario, who looks like he's between 200 and maybe 250 pounds. Probably an average height of around 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, and you can see the officer that is, of course, that is working with him is a, an individual who looks like he's in fairly good shape, fairly tall. And you see the difficulty that they have, of course, in trying to just to get him down to the floor. And from a nursing perspective, when you deal with intoxicated patients like this, they're very strong and they're very hard to deal with. When they become non-compliant, you typically do need multiple individuals um, to restrain them, especially when you have to give that person medication. Now, typically, we use things like Ativan, among other medications, to help chemically sedate the individual so that they'll go through the signs um, of withdrawal in a safe way within a hospital setting. Now, of course, when unchecked in the community setting, these individuals can have cardiac events, especially when they're under stress, like, for example, in this situation. On top of the fact that this man is obese and could have other things like, for example, diabetes, heart failure, um coronary artery disease as well as um high blood pressure to just name a few of the things that typically individuals like this who don't necessarily have the best access to health and of course are not living a healthy lifestyle and of course, you see they're trying to get both his both his hands behind his back. 
And like I said before, this is a good shot. You can see that the officer looks like he's in fairly good shape. You can see the wide back. Not exactly an obese guy. It looks like he has good sized arms, good sized legs. This is by no means a small man. And as you can see, how many of these officers, when you're dealing with someone like this, especially when you're dealing with another man who is non compliant, as you can see that just because some people will say, well, there are two or three of you, as you can see the difficulty in just trying to restrain and get the hands behind the back of this individual. Especially because he has leverage because of where, where his arms are in front of him. <clears throat> You're about to get that arm out. Mario, put your hand behind your back. Hello. And you hear the officer go, whoo, because he's getting tired. Hey, hey, there. I'm so sorry. There. So I think you can notice here that the officer's leg is not on top of the is not on top of the individual. You can see his leg right here and his other leg is right here. He has his forearm on the back of the individual because right? he's trying to keep the person he's trying to per keep the person down because the person is trying to get up. Relax. 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 Okay. Ah. And of course he has his weight on him. Yeah. All right, what are we going to do? Just keep him pinned down and get the rack here. Yeah. And then you can hear the ambulance in the distance. All right, watch out. All right, so it's already 11 minutes into the, into, into the altercation. And then, as you can see, it's probably been at least another minute or so until they're finally able to get the individual down and handcuffed. Hey, Mario. <laughs> It's okay, Mario. Oh my gosh. We're going to take care of you, okay? We're going to take care of you. Okay. There. There. Thank you. And you hear the you hear the guy say thank you. He's clearly clearly confused. Now, this is where the mistakes take place. In a scenario like this, where once you have the individual handcuffed, what they should have done is they should have immediately rolled them over onto his stomach and then sat the person up. And this is typically the instance where officers make mistake, and it could be related to not enough training. It's important from a nursing perspective that you need to be able to see the patient's face to be able to tell. You don't just go by what the monitors tell you. You actually have to look at the patient and start to see if you're seeing um, if the person is having difficulty breathing, which you can see when he, he kind of gasps, where the person, or like in between trying to speak, where he does kind of gasp, and the officers are asking him to calm down. Now, a man who is overweight like this might have difficulty uh, laying down on his stomach because, one, he's obese, and of course, it makes it uh, maybe a little bit more difficult for his heart. <laughs> There, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay. Stop doing it. It's okay. What's your name? Now, especially if you're if you're if you're putting any sort of weight on the individual, a person who you know, a lot of times men don't realize how much they weigh and how difficult it can be. Now, if you're a healthy individual and you're prepared for the scenario, it might not really bother you all that much. But if you're an individual who maybe has underlying conditions and that's where the danger can take place mario what's your last name mario alberto, alberto? Hey, mario. what's your birth all right and so you see the the person can still state what his name is he can give his first and last name he is be he's able to respond to commands and so you, you even though the person mentally is still there at the very least from the standpoint of being able to 
respond to commands, you still want to be able to look at the individual. I think. <laughs> we got you. I was, it's okay. I was, time. I was, We're okay, okay? <laughs> now, we're going to look at something. You see the hand. All right. Mario. It might be related to... Go ahead and get a Okay. Charlie, can you grab the... The wrap? Mario. Hey, Mario. What's your birthday? No! Can you figure it out? Please don't do what? And again, the police officers might not understand why the individual is struggling. He could be struggling because he can't breathe. He could be struggling because he's having a cardiac event. And the officers are just thinking that the individual is just um, being non-compliant and trying to resist arrest. We're not, probably, we're not perhaps realizing that the person could be going through a cardiac event. Now, this is what I noticed the last time, right? So you saw before... And there was like a little glimpse of it when they were flashing back and forth with the body camera. And you saw the very pale looking hand, right? And you can see that right here. Now, it could be related to where his hands were digging through the grass. But again, you would still be able to see the redness in proper perfusion. And this is why I thought that the individual had some sort of a cardiac event. Because when a person is going through a cardiac event, the body will shunt blood from the extremities and of course it will focus on the ma major organs and not too long after this um, the individual becomes unresponsive all right oh. Please don't shoot me. I'm sorry, hey mario just talk to me okay yeah what's your birthday mario it's okay i forgive you sorry 1984 what what month and so you see the person is still responsive. He's at least A&O times two. Or we would say he's able to say his name and, of course, his date of birth. No. Right, like I said before, you can clearly see. And typically, I notice it by the, by the nail where you can see some what looks like a lack of perfusion. It, again, it could be related to when he was basically struggling and he had his hands kind of digging in the grass, uh, digging in the gravel over here, but it still looks fairly pale by comparison to what we saw before where you could see that nice uh, bright red color. It could be related to having the handcuffs on, but typically from a nursing perspective, this is what you would look for uh, to show if the individual is having, that's typically what you would look for in a cardiac event are uh, changes in perfusion. <laughs> Okay. And of course, uh, changes in mental status, or if I, or if the person becomes non-responsive. Mario. I think I think you just had too much to drink today. That's all. Okay. Oh. And so then now we see a third Mario, officer. Mario, calm down. And it's, in, and it's in this scenario where the officers continue to make the same mistake. There's three different officers that are there. They can easily turn the patient over, have him sit up so that he's in a basically a seated position while they're waiting for EMS to come and to maybe perhaps sedate the individual with some medication to help him to calm down until he gets to the hospital. Come please. Stop kicking, Mario. Stop. Stop kicking. And if you also look here, I want to cut right back. Hold on. Right, they give a they give a quick flash. Again, you see the quick flash of the other hand, where you can see what looks like to me is a lack of perfusion. Mario, stop! Stop kicking! And these could be construed as agonal breaths. And then the patient becomes unresponsive. Okay. Think we can roll them on the side? I don't want to lose what I got, man. Okay. Can you grab the wrap out of 111? Mario, just please stop fighting us. And again, like I said before, you have no idea what the man looks like. It's important to be able to see if the person is having some sort of an event. And you'll notice that by his face. With the man being face down, you can't see what color the individual's face is. He could be foaming at the mouth. You have absolutely no idea while you have this individual in a face down position. 
We have no weight on his chest. Can you go around there? <clears throat> no, 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 no wait, no wait. Right again, you again, like I said, you see, you see the discoloration in the hands. It should be very prominent now, where you see the discoloration in the hands. No wait. And then he stops moving. Hello, everybody else. Here. He's going on a sponsor. Copy. Mario. 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 Is it VIP on the way? Yeah. 41 and you see see the other officer over here i believe is the one who asked if you have a pulse in a scenario like this where your patient become where the individual that you're in who you're responsible for becomes unresponsive the officers should have immediately removed the handcuffs now of course this might be related to their protocol but in a scenario like this where you realize that you're going to have to start cpr it's important that the person is as flat as is on a flat surfaces and of course with his hand behind his back you end up risking injuring the patient even further and it makes it a little bit more difficult to do cpr now the cpr that the officers perform doesn't exactly look that adequate which is why it's important in scenarios like this for the for police officers to have a defibrillator within their car and to immediately put the electrodes on the individual so that they can see if the person is having a cardiac event and so also so that the the, the machine will let you know if you're adequately doing cpr Uh, you got a pulse? Right, and you can see the pale when they showed the stomach. You can see the person is pale. Yeah. Okay. Check. He's still holding his head up. Right, and so in a scenario like this, as a police officer, if you cannot immediately find a pulse, if you can't check here, you can immediately check a radio pulse. If you look at the individual, the person is unresponsive. If from the blurred vision, it looks like his face was red, and so he probably had a lot of blood rushing to the to his head. And in a scenario like this, where you the person becomes unresponsive, where they were responsive at the very least, he was A and O times two. He could say his name, right? He could say his date of birth, and then he becomes completely unresponsive. If you cannot find a pulse, you immediately start CPR. No pulse. No start pulse. CPR. Are you sure? Yeah. Good sir. And so you can see a lot of time is wasted. Right, and so you, it, they do CPR for about four minutes. This is at, the, at minimum a 15 minute altercation. And unfortunately it ends up in the loss of life of an individual. He went from combative to non-responsive almost right. immediately. Okay. We started compressions when we checked on no pulse. Yeah, uh, four milligrams each. And I couldn't make out what he said there when he said something about four milligrams each. I'm not quite sure what he was referring to. But again, in, in this scenario, you can see that there are multiple mistakes made and it could be related to uh, it could be related to lack of proper training, especially from the medical standpoint, where individuals are uh, in a position where they should have turned the in, turned the individual over, and again, of course, where police officers are trying to gain control of the scenario. But once uh, once you realize that a person is either dealing with alcohol withdrawal or might have signs of mental illness, it's important to sit these individuals up and for police for that to literally be hammered into the mind of police officers, along with along with uh, CPR, learning to do CPR very early. You can see that there were multiple times where they did perform multiple checks and then an individual starts CPR and then he stops, etc. And of course, recognizing the signs of an individual who is having an event, which is, of course, the difficulty in breathing. You can see that he was trying to sit himself up. And for the most part, in this type of scenario where you already have the individual handcuffed, you have the individual outnumbered with multiple police officers, especially because there were at least three men that were there to put this person in the best seated position so that they're able to maintain perfusion and of course the ability to breathe 
And this is basically my take on it as a nurse. I really don't think that these individuals had any sort of malice. What it 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 more amounts to a lack of appropriate training when it comes to dealing with these sort of individuals, and more importantly, on the on the medical side of how to manage these individuals. And of course early calling for a paramedic so that they can perhaps give this certain individual some medication so that they become much easier to manage because ETOA to patients, especially when they become uh, non-compliant, are very difficult to manage. Unfortunately, this individual has lost his life, uh, but by no means should we allow this scenario to be utilized against the Hispanic community to then drag us into the same mess that you see with uh, many black Americans where they're out here rioting. Under, under no shape or form, whether justified or unjustified, should we allow ourselves to be dragged into this whole uh, systemic racism narrative? Because the only thing that it serves to do is to pit people against people. And like I said in the very beginning, when you see, when you notice this, these things, and this is the agenda of the individual, the best thing that you can do is avoid him. Rest in peace to Mr. Gonzalez. Unfortunately, his lifestyle, uh, and of course the lack of education among the police officers is what led to this individual's death.